Hi, I'm Chris Dixon. I'm here with Josh Koppelman, and we have uh, with us Carla Holtz, the uh, co-founder of Have to Have. Thanks for being here. Um, what does Have to Have do? Sure. Have to Have is a digital shopping platform that's fun, easy, and social for consumers, and it allows them to save, share, and shop for any product that they find across the web that they just have to have. And so, you know, it's really like my own personal registry that my friends, family, mm -hmm. and um, followers could tap into and see what buy me everything that I have to have. And so what are some of the key challenges that you, you're facing right now? Sure. Um, you know, given that it's really a two-sided platform of users and, um, you know, retailers, really with limited resources, what, you know, how do you recommend that I kind of balance those needs? You know, attracting users then would make me more attractive to the strategic partners, or do I focus on really, you know, acquiring retailers who then bring with them the user base? Without the retailers, do the users have any functionality, or do they do the retailers need to participate in order for their goods to be in the in the service? No, the <coughs> retailers do not need to be participating in order for you know a user to bring in their goods. So, so building a marketplace is the hardest. Mm -hmm. It's you know the the chicken and egg and supply and demand is especially it's hard enough to go out and 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 generate demand, but then to have to generate demand and supply at the same time, it's sort of what makes marketplace businesses really tough. Um, when we started Half.com. Over a decade ago, we really had teams that were focused just on supply and just on demand. It sounds to me like you have a little bit of a benefit in which your consumers can get real utility by, and actually use the service even if the, the brands aren't there. So it seems like, you know, it, it, in a world of scarce resources, again, without knowing the full story, it would seem like that would tend to be something which, um, you know, you could still satisfy the users and then use the users to bring the brands on board. But it's this is the this is the hardest question yeah. of any market. And if you look, at, I think if you look at the, the the startups that have had success attracting fashion brands today, like Polyvore and Tumblr, for example, they they both started with the kind of consumer side and then got some traction there, and then used that, I think, to as far as I know, in their stories, and then used that to kind of bring the retailers on. So that seems to be the winning strategy thus far. It doesn't mean it's the only strategy, but that's great. Thanks. And then I guess, you know, the next one I'd like to talk about was fundraising. You know, we're getting ready to raise our seed round and just kind of want, you know, as investors, kind of tips and suggestions, you know, that you have to navigate the landscape, you know, talk to, talk about the competition, everything else. Um, so I think there's that, that you could we could talk for a long time about that. Um, I think um, I think what's interesting you're in an interesting space right now in the fashion space, which is there's a lot of interesting new companies being started. And I think um, the um, investor community might not be is might be ill prepared for that because <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that just simply don't understand the space, um, and so that, I think that uh, presents a particular challenge. Um, you know, I think I don't know what like some ways around that are to maybe get sort of surround yourself with credible people who have knowledge of the fashion world who can sort of serve as signaling, sort of you know signals to the investors to sort of. Help them understand it better. Another way, obviously, is to get sort of user traction. That's always sort of the most convincing thing. I don't know if you have other. No, I think, and I think it's also you're in a space where there are some other players that you know that might have slightly different approaches. But it's also really important to understand, you know, I think to, to how to tell the story and frame where you are vis-a-vis -vis your competitors or the other players in the space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um, all too often, you know, you, you you tell the story just focusing. You know, entrepreneurs tell the story just focusing on themselves. But to some degree, they really need to paint the brush to sort of where they fall in in the industry, you know, against all the other players. Yeah, because well. whether you like it or not, investors, the press, et cetera, they're all going to say you're polyvore, but different in this way or something. That's how people are going to, they always end up sort of pegging mm -hmm. you to something mm -hmm. else. And I think that happens no matter what. And so you might as well get ahead of it and sort of, you know what I mean? And like, and actually just sort of decide how you're going to be pegged. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, be framed, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think you know beyond that, I think you want to just like network like crazy. You want to meet everyone you can. Um, you know, I think um, I've found that that fellow entrepreneurs can be a really helpful um, way, sort of, uh, to get warm introductions into to investors. Um, uh, you know, and it's uh, also a good time. There are a lot of seed funds now that the people that yeah. might be able to anchor or lead around. Where, as you know, even as recently as two or three years ago, raising a seed round meant getting. You know, 10, 15 different checks, and you know, and and herding cats. Here, 
there are enough seed funds yeah. now that you might be able to sort of find one and, and let them be your anchor and your lead. Mm -hmm. And really the key yeah. challenge is getting that anchor. Like once you have, and that's really, really hard to do. And it's like this, like a marketplace, it's like a chicken and egg problem. <laughs> um, but once you get that anchor, often it becomes dramatically easier. Um, there's all these sorts of things like angel lists and other things which mm -hmm. let you kind of round out the round, right? But getting yeah. that anchor, getting that sort of first commitment is, is very, very hard, despite what you read, I think, on like the blogs and things today, I think it's, you know, even though it's a good time to raise money, it's still very, very hard for, you know, for, to, to raise a seed mm -hmm. round. So. And I guess another question, if we've got time, is we are getting ready to launch Have to Have. And, um, you know, developing exclusivity around a brand is very important. It's been very successful, a lot of companies. There's also the other side that, you know, keep it very open, just allow anybody in. What are your thoughts on, you know, kind of having that exclusivity and only allowing a certain number of people in or, you know, keeping it really open to launch? So are you do, are, would, is there any reason to create the exclusivity in terms of capacity, server load, et cetera, or is it just sort of, you know, velvet rope? Just velvet rope. We have total capacity. Um, you know, look, we've seen it work. We've seen the velvet rope work in a number of areas. Just, you know, Turntable FM is a perfect mm -hmm. example now of one that sort of created the, the, the you know, de facto velvet rope just by mm -hmm. requiring Facebook friends. Um, that said, I think, you know, the velvet rope only works when you have a product that people really love. Mm -hmm. You have a product that people are willing to wait in line for and stand in line for and do things. So a lot of it depends on, on, on the product and, the, and its inherent virality and the word of mouth that comes from it. Because what you don't want to have is the velvet rope and no one inside and no one outside either. So, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> you know, a lot of it depends on the under, on, you know, under, on the underlying product as well. Mm -hmm. 